Hey guys, welcome back. Probably didn't recognize me since I've shaved, <laughs> but I have shaved and uh, no one was sash for me. Anyways, uh, this week I wanted to ask you a simple question, but this question has deep value and I really want you to ponder this as I talk and even, you know, once the video is done. Are you happy? See, I wanted to ask this question because um, it was, honestly, I was watching a series of uh, videos for uh, to discuss with a friend of mine, a couple of friends of mine, and in that, they uh, the speaker had asked, you know, um, are you happy? And it kind of haunted the one of my friends, and it haunted me as well, because it, it made me realize, like, it, it made me think about it. And this is a question that, I mean, a lot of us, when we're asked, how are we doing? A lot of us respond, and including me, I'm guilty of this. No matter what the situation is, we're like, oh, things are going good, how about you? Or, you know, it's great, life is good. But very often, we don't sit down to think about it. Um, so, I wanted to ask you, are you happy? Because um, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about that, and the, the question is not as simple as it seems anymore. Uh, one, I wanted to talk about the fundamentals of it. What the, the fundamentals is the best way to describe it. Second, I wanted to talk about sorrow. And lastly, I want to talk about your greatest identity. Okay, this one's this, that part's pretty interesting. Um, so to begin, your begin, let's talk about fundamentals. So, I wanted to talk about one thing that you and I share. I don't care who you are, where you are. What you what you've done? Who you've you get the point? Um, but yes, you and I share something in common. Actually, we share a couple things: life and you know. But I'm not gonna get into that. Everything we do. Here's the thing that's in common: everything that we do, we do to seek happiness, right? Be it chase money, chase success, chase fame, chase fortune. Um, you know, good grades try to get whatever the thing is, try to please our parents, whatever it is, it's because we think it'll get us happy, right? Everything, every human, every desire that we have, it's be, it's to, the ultimate goal is to get, is to be happy. And so that's something every single one of us, and that's seven point whatever billion people in the world, okay, that, that's every single one of us are striving to be happy every waking moment of our lives. Well, then we should do what makes us happy, right? But there's a little hitch in that, and I'll talk about that in a second. But I wanted to distinguish happiness and joy, right? Because because happiness is short-lived, very short-lived. I mean, we may eat ice cream and we feel happy, you know? We may see a friend after a long time and we may feel happy. The thing about it, about happiness per se, is that it's not long-term. It's really short-term, it's really short-lived. You know, I definitely enjoy getting on the phone with my friends, and whenever I do, I get happy. I, I miss my friends, and I get to talk to them. Um, and so that makes me happy, but the thing is that happiness is short-lived. Right? I may feel happy for a couple of days, but afterwards, that feeling's faded away. Joy, on the other hand, joy lasts. But that's not because joy is something that you get. It is something that you give. Right? Joy is... Joy is joy and love are two things in this world that don't act like anything else, right? Because when when you give joy and when you love, the more you give, the more you get. And uh, joy isn't temporary. Joy lasts. See, because I'm gonna get into that. I really want to. I don't want to spoil it. That the third point is good. I promise. So then, do what makes you happy, right? Well, I would disagree. I would disagree. I would say do what makes God happy, and in that you get joy. Because nothing that God asks for is bad. Nothing that God asks for is shameful. Yeah, it may not be easy, <laughs> but then you get the, the joy of overcoming that, right? You get the joy of saying, okay, hey, I went out of my way to do something nice for somebody else. Or, hey, I died to myself today in avoiding that certain sin because it's not what because it's what God wanted. And I guarantee you, the 
the pleasures, the happy, the, by doing what makes you happy, even if that, if that means you're doing something wrong that makes you happy, because, um, okay, let's take this example. If I like ice cream, which I do <laughs> a lot, if I like chocolates and ice cream, and I decide to have a whole tub of ice cream, I'm doing what makes me happy, but is it good? Not really. I'll get a triple chin if I do that. Um, not really, that's not how uh, anatomy works, but let's uh, get into that. Uh, yeah, it, it's not good for me to have a whole tub, a whole gallon of ice cream, to have it in one sitting. That's not a good thing for me, but it makes me happy, right? So just, but by doing what God would want me to do, now, for those of you that may not know, there is a sin of gluttony, and it doesn't, you know, that's a, it doesn't matter if you're Catholic or not, or even um, theistic or not. Even if you're an atheist, you would agree that having too much of something is wrong. An uncontrollable amount of something is wrong. And so, um, that being said, I, I mean, by doing what God would want me to do, because ultimately, let's think about it. Why would God want us to do something? Does he want us to sacrifice and not feel happy? No, he created us for love. He created us for for joy. And that's, and he is, you know, he, he is as wise as it gets. He knows how we react to certain things. He knows how, how the tub of ice cream will make us happy. But then when we look in the mirror a couple of days later, we'll notice some more weight. We'll, we'll, we'll not be impressed by that. We may get sick, you know, whatever the s side effects of that would be. Well, oh my gosh, it's seven minutes. <laughs> I need to cut my talks down. Jeez, okay, let's hurry on. Anyways, yes, that is the first point. Um, do what God wants you to do because he wants what's what's gonna last. He doesn't want what's gonna um, what's gonna be temporary for you. Right? He wants what's best for you. Secondly, does this mean you're never gonna face sorrow? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You are gonna face sorrow. You're gonna face struggles. But you know something? The joy will get you through it. And at some points, you're not gonna feel too great. You know, you're gonna feel like giving up. You're gonna feel like quitting. You're gonna feel like giving in. But it's there's always a good end. There's always an, the end to a tunnel. So um, what I had was let's take okay first first let's look at John chapter eleven verse thirty five. It's the shortest verse in the Bible. It's, he wept. Yeah. You will still feel sorrow. You're still going to feel bad. You're still going to feel disappointed when things don't go your way. When things don't happen and they, and they're not, things, good things aren't happening. It's not, it's, I'm not promising a good, you know, infinite amount of good things. But I am saying that you'll get through it and you will be happy that you chose this way. You will be joyful that you chose this way. See, Jesus wept when Lazarus was, Lazarus had died. He wept. He understood the sorrow. Second, in the agony of the garden. I mean, Jesus was in the garden before he got in the garden of Gethsemane, before he died, or before he was crucified, and he wept blood. Like JP talked about uh, last week, or this Sunday, I should say, um, Jesus wept blood, and that is a scientific, uh, it's a scientific thing. Like, people do that when they're faced with extreme anxiety and stress and you know so he's no he's no stranger to this he's no stranger to the suffering um well in judas and then and then let's look at judas and peter right uh i wanted to mention them because i wanted to help you understand how to get out of something right if you're feeling this uh, sorrow and you're feeling this upsetness depression whatever it may be I got Judas handle it. He did something terrible. He forfeited Jesus for money. Um, and uh, because of that, he felt really guilty. And so he went and he hung himself. However, Peter, Peter denied Jesus three times. You could argue that the, the morality was completely different, but Jesus' closest friend when he needed him was, wasn't there. And Peter felt that same guilt, but he didn't, he didn't call it quits. Because he knew, he knew in the depths of his heart that there was, um, there there was, that he knew that Jesus was the Savior, and he knew that there was hope, and there was joy to be found. And most importantly, 
he knew his greatest identity. And that's what I'm going to talk about. That's my point C. Your greatest identity, guys, it isn't your sexual orientation. It isn't um, how you feel about certain things. It isn't your political party. It isn't any of that. No. Your deepest identity is that you are a child of God. You are a child of God. And you are so, so loved by him. I've said this so many times before, and I'm going to continue saying it. Because this is something that, that people don't hear in often enough. And I think it would be really beneficial if they did. Well, in John chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus says something along the lines of, There's no greater love than this, to lay down one's life uh, for a friend. Something along those lines. And, well, Jesus did that for you, not for us, for you. Yeah, for you. Um, he did it for you, the one with all the sins, the one with, you know, the, the, okay, let's get to this. The whole reason why I talked about this or why I thought about writing about this is today is because this week or last week, really, I should say, you know, I did some things I wasn't proud of, and as usual, I do that a lot, and um, I let that get into my mind. I let that uh, dig in and really true bite away at my uh, joy. It's not that I'm a super joyful person. I'd like to see myself as happy most of the time, but I'm not a super joyful person, and that really stung. The, the sin really stung, and so... Um, you know, it affected my, it affected my life in different ways. It affected it in the, in the sense that, you know, I didn't want to go out and do things like I normally do. I didn't want to, it, it I lacked motivation and stuff. And so as I was thinking about that, uh, and praying about it, I got the thought, and this was definitely the Holy Spirit speaking to me. It was that Travis because you fell into certain things, if because you did this, does that make you who you are? Is that your greatest identity? And as soon as I, as soon as I heard that, it just clicked. It's like, I've got nothing to worry about. I've got, no matter what I've done, I could have committed murder for all I care. And I would still be loved by God. So don't restrict yourself to your sins. Don't restrict yourself to the things you like and dislike. No. You are so much more than that. You are loved by God. Um, there's a quote that Mother, mother, uh, that <laughs> mother Teresa had once said. She said, Jesus loves you so much. If only you knew. It goes to show that Jesus loves you no matter what. No matter what, he loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter who you, you know, who, who you are, I guess in that sense, picking fights with or whatever the case may be. It doesn't matter what you've done. He loves you no matter who you are. He loves you for who you are. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Go out and be joyful. And ask this question to yourself every day. Are you happy?